evil severed hands, books used for summoning demons, cursed samurai swords, these are the dark truths behind sacred relics worshipped by secret societies. The Hand of Glory, or should I say, Hands of Glory. This is really referring to a type of relic rather than one specifically. Hands of Glory are real human hands, usually severed from a criminal, then dried and pickled. They were used in various superstitious rituals. Stories about them go back hundreds and hundreds of years, but some of them still exist today. One is on display at the Whitby Museum in North Yorkshire, England. Along with the hand is a piece of text that describes how to create one of these hands of glory, so in case you want to make one for yourself, take notes. It must be cut from the body of a criminal on the gibbet. Pickled in salt and the urine of man, woman, dog, horse, and mare. Smoked with herbs and hay for a month. Hung on an oak tree for three nights running. Then laid at a crossroads. Then hung on a church door for one night while the maker keeps watch in the porch. And if it be that no fear hath driven you from the porch, then the hand be true one and it be yours. Hands of Glory go back to medieval European folklore. The hand would typically be taken from a hanged criminal, and the fingers were sometimes used as candles in rituals. According to legend, these candles had the power to render people unconscious or paralyze them, and they were used to ward off supernatural forces or bring misfortune to enemies. Muramasa swords are famous in Japanese history. For one, they're incredible pieces of craftsmanship, known for their sharpness, strength, and the legendary skill of their maker, Muramasa Sengo, a blacksmith from the 16th century. They're highly prized weapons, but with a dark reputation. Muramasa's blades were known for their razor sharp edges. They were considered the ultimate weapon by samurai, and they're still highly sought after by collectors to this day, but they were also said to be cursed. The story goes that Muramasa's swords are cursed and bring misfortune to their owners. According to legend, the curse comes from the blacksmith himself, who is said to have been a troubled, vengeful man who eventually lost his mind. One theory is that Muramasa was so obsessed obsessed with his craft, that he let his anger and bitterness seep into the swords themselves. One of the most famous stories is that the swords are cursed because they're always thirsty for you know what. It's said that the blades have a tendency to drive their wielders to violence and madness. It was said that if you drew one of these blades, you couldn't sheath it again without feeding it, meaning you had to draw B L O D, either from your enemy or yourself. The fairy flag is an ancient tattered piece of cloth held in a Dunvegan castle on the island of Skye in Scotland. The castle is the ancestral home of the MacLeod clan, and the flag is one of their most precious heirlooms. So what's the story behind this mysterious flag? The story goes that the fairy flag was a gift from the fairies, said to have magical powers, including the power to protect the clan in battle and bring them victory. It was to be used in times of dire need, but the catch was that it could only be used three times before losing its power completely. It's already been used twice in two separate battles between the McLeods and the McDonalds. It was almost carried into battle in World War II, but that never ended up happening, so it still has one fight left in it. The Swansea Devil, also known as Old Nick. The tale starts in Swansea, Wales in the 1890s. St. Mary's Church was being rebuilt. The design bids were put out, and one man who submitted plans was a local architect who wasn't chosen. Yeah, he was not happy about this. Years later, he bought a row of cottages right next to the church that were up for sale, and then he tore them all down, building a new office building for a brewery in their place. And in his desperate crusade of pettiness, he carved a wooden sculpture of the devil, which he placed in the window directly facing the church, prophesizing that when this church is, quote, destroyed and burnt to the ground, my devil will remain laughing. Well, fast forward to World War II. During a blitz in February of 1941, St. Mary's Church was indeed destroyed by bombs, but the office building with the devil carving in it was left completely untouched. It sat there intact, laughing over the ruins of the church. After the war, the building that housed the old Nick was eventually torn down in 1962. The devil carving was stored away in a garage, but in the 80s, a local historian retrieved old Nick and brought it back home. It can now be found in the Swansea Museum. The Book of the Law. 
This is the central text of Thelema, which is a spiritual and philosophical movement that was founded by Aleister Crowley. Crowley claimed that the Book of the Law came to him from a spiritual entity named Awas, who he would later refer to as his own holy guardian angel. The Book of the Law is basically a set of spiritual guidelines or commandments. It's divided into three chapters, each supposedly written by a different deity. The most famous line from the book is, Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. The idea being that people should pursue their own goals and aspirations without being restricted by conventional, moral, or societal rules. But the book was and still is kinda controversial, to some anyway, with more traditional folks viewing Crowley as a man who was promoting the use of dark magic. Witch bottles. These come from a time when people were super worried about witches and dark magic, especially in Europe during the late 16 and 1700s. These bottles were believed to protect people from evil spells and witchcraft. What exactly are witch bottles though? They're usually small glass or stoneware containers. The basic idea was to fill these bottles with a mix of items, uh, standard stuff, pins, needles, nails, hair, urine. And supposedly, when you put it all together in the bottle, they'd act as a sort of magical shield against witches and all their evil spells. In 2014, archeologists uncovered a 15 centimeter green glass bottle at the Civil War Center in Nottinghamshire. The bottle was probably used as a witch bottle, which were usually buried or hidden in homes in secret locations as part of this protective ritual. Now, there's not a lot of detailed info about witch bottles because secrecy was such a key part of their use. People believed that keeping the process hidden made it more effective. The Key of Solomon, one of the most famous grimoires in history. It's a really interesting piece of work, deeply rooted in the world of magic and mysticism. The Key of Solomon is a collection of texts that were supposedly written by King Solomon himself, but we really don't know who wrote it for sure. The idea is that Solomon, the wise, powerful king, had access to secret knowledge and magical powers. The Key of Solomon mainly focuses on magic, how to summon spirits and demons and then control them. He can also cast spells, use various magical tools, and even become invisible. The text is packed with detailed instructions on how to prepare for rituals, including the creation of magical circles, symbols, invocations, and what animals that you're going to need to sacrifice to contact these spirits. Throughout history, secret societies and occultists have looked to the Key of Solomon as a guide for accessing all this hidden knowledge and power. It's been referenced in all kinds of magical traditions and has influenced other works in magic as well. The Golan structure is a fascinating site found in the Golan Heights in northern Israel. It's hard to describe exactly what it is because no one really knows. It's this large ancient stone monument made up of basalt stones arranged in a series of circular patterns, and it's been dated to around 3,000 years ago. The main circle of stones is about 150 feet in diameter, and it's surrounded by a series of then smaller circles and enclosures. The stones are arranged in such a precise way, and some researchers believe it might have been used for rituals or maybe an observatory of some kind. One of the reasons the Golan structure is so interesting is because of its age, and the fact that there's no definitive explanation for what it was used for. It's also a bit of a mystery as to who built it. Some believe it could have been built by the ancient Canaanites, but there's a lot of debate about this. And unfortunately, we may never know for sure. The Codex Gigas is often referred to as the Devil's Bible. This is a massive book, about 36 inches tall and weighs over 75 pounds. It was made sometime between 1204 and 1230, and it's packed with a ton of content. It contains various texts like historical documents, medical knowledge, and even some magic spells, as well as the Old and New Testament, which makes it a real grab bag of medieval wisdom and lore. And that's because this was supposedly written to contain all the known knowledge in the universe at the time. The tale goes that the Codex Gigas was created by a monk who was condemned to death for breaking his vows, but he managed to make a deal with the devil to save his life. See, the monk's challenge had been to write out all human knowledge in one night, otherwise he'd be axed, which, I mean, obviously an impossible task, but the devil was nice enough to help him finish the job. 
But of course, the price was steep his soul. The tale came about from the large, full-page depiction of Satan on the inside, or at least a devil-like creature, which some say was illustrated by the devil himself, sort of like his signature. Some say the Codex is cursed, or even evil, and that misfortune befalls anyone who gets too close to it. The book's been preserved in Sweden's National Library since 1768. The Hope Diamond, which can currently be found in the National Museum of Natural History in Washington, D.C., was stolen from an Indian idol back in the 17th century. The gem is one of the most famous but notorious diamonds in the world. It's a large, deep blue diamond that weighs about 45 and a half carats. The Hope Diamond has a long history that traces back to India. It's believed to have been originally mined in the Golconda Mines. It was eventually taken by a French merchant named John Baptist Tavernier, who, as the legend goes, died of a fever before being torn apart by wild dogs. It soon made its way to the hands of King Louis XVI and Mary Antoinette, who had it stolen when they were imprisoned during the French Revolution. There are tons of other stories claiming that the Hope Diamond brings bad luck or disaster to whoever owned it. Eventually, the diamond was purchased by American socialite Evelyn Walsh McLean, and she then went on to have some rough times too. She lost her son, her husband, been left her. Eventually, the diamond was donated to the Smithsonian Institution in 1958, where it's been on display ever since. With all that said, I've been your host, James, and I'll catch you, yes, you specifically, in the next video.